Welcome to the Living Life Juicy Podcast. I'm your guide, John Losey. This is where we explore how we can be present and kind as we do great things. You can find the Living uh, Living Life Juicy Podcast on YouTube or your favorite podcast platforms. And really, uh, what I'm about with this is just talk with interesting people and and learning from them. and, And we exchange ideas. Now, again, check out my other other resources, the Growing People Podcast YouTube channel for resources about uh, people and individuals and groups um, moving forward. Uh, also, I got to mention it, uh, the Pottery Panda Art of Intentional Progress, which is ni- my new book, you can find at potterypanda.com. Again, you can find me on LinkedIn and Facebook by either John Losey or Bear Losey. That's where I'm at. Um and we just got done, Mike Brennan and I just got it done with a great conversation where we talked about uh, creativity and we talked about habits and we talked about fun. And because he has his new book out uh, that's called Make Fun a Habit, it's coming out in the fall of 2023, um, but it's available for pre-sale now. But what I like to do is I like to encourage Mike Uh, Whoever my guests are, I like to encourage them to turn the tables on me and give them the control of the microphone and the podcast and ask three questions, three questions from Mike. And what I can promise is I will respond. I may not have an answer, but at least I'll have a response. So, Mike, welcome back. And what do you got? Yeah. So uh, I'm going to keep it within my wheelhouse. Uh, with creativity and fun and habits. And so those will be uh, the center of my three questions. So I'll start with what is a creative problem you are trying to solve right now? And how are you attacking that? Um, My biggest creative problem right now is figuring out how to uh, reinvigorate my uh, reputation as an organizational consultant. So over the uh, pandemic, I really went out there and helped a lot of people figure out virtual and hybrid stuff. And most of those people weren't my market for my consulting business. So over two years, I i mean, I think we together, that community of people did some great things, but none of them were my customer base. So over those two years, I lost a lot of connection with uh, especially my local business community. So that is my creative hurdle right now is how do I reintroduce myself to that community? And I'm still refining that process. One of the things that I'm doing is I'm going to networking events, which kill me. I just, I'm, I love talking with people, but I I don't like the context. I love networking just in the fact of let's get to know each other, not trying to build referrals for everybody. So I went to one last night and I, I gotta be okay with that. So that's part of, that's a habit I need to get rid of, that uh, get into that's uncomfortable for me. The other thing is I'm going with, if you want to have a good idea, have lots of ideas. So I'm, I'm, I'm putting a lot of stuff out there, putting a lot of stuff on paper and letting a few things rise to the top. And I've always had a pet. I believe that professional development and coaching needs to be available throughout your organization, but it seems it's only available to the C-suite and do executives. So I've taken what I've learned over the past couple of years, the concept called guided practice groups. And what it really is, it's community-based coaching for development and support. And in that you're, you're calling on a group of six to 10 people. And it's a, and it's a defined six week process and it's affordable because of the structure of it. I can make it affordable to fit into whatever professional development budget a organization has for their frontline employees or for their managers or for the supervisors. And I'm I'm really excited about this because it just so happens this week when we're recording this, farmers let go 11% of their staff, farmers insurance. And I have a ton of friends there. And because I've created this format, I can offer that to the people who are laid off for free. So I'm making two cohorts available for the people who got laid off for free and for the people who are left behind after a layoff like this, a lot of trust needs to be built. I'm, I'm creating it available to leaders at farmers for their people at 50% off. They can create their own custom cohort and get their people growing. So I'm trying to uh, reintroduce myself and build, rebuild my reputation, but I'm also like uh, uh, trying to do good and, and serve people as well. 
great question. I, I that's like my biggest creative uh, challenge right now. Yeah, yeah, certainly uh, reinvention and um, creativity brings in possibilities. You know, um, we had that as part of our, our previous conversation, but uh, that certainly is is something that gives you the ability to go, what's what can I do here? You know, um, and and how do I shift and navigate in changing times? Um, so I applaud you for that. Um, and and piggybacking on, on another part of our conversation, you know, talking about fun and play. Um, certainly, we don't want to do all these things in a way that is um, boring or <laughs> taxing to us, where we're like, uh, you know, just this is painful. This whole process. Um, so there has to be some amount of excitement, play, and fun. And so, what does that look like for you? How do you define fun? Mm. Yeah. Um, in a lot of ways, it's like it's almost counterintuitive. Fun is what helps me forget about the big things that I'm facing, but also help me face the big things that I'm facing. And and it, it helps. I've got a, a nine year old boy. That really helps. Um, to bring out the fun because like that when you're a child it's clear either everything sucks and is boring or you cannot <laughs> stop them from having fun and i'm trying to teach my son that that fun is a choice and that whatever you step into can be fun uh, if you see it that way you look for the things um that that engage you and pull you in so a lot of the times what i find fun number one i find making stuff up that works fun. Um, I find learning from other people who are, it doesn't have to be in my world or anything like that, but people who are overcoming, people who are growing, people who have this growth mindset. Like for instance, uh, Paul Simon, if you haven't heard um, his, they have an audio book where Malcolm Gladwell interviews Paul Simon in an audio book. And it's basically a, a musical autobiography called Miracle and Wonder. And I love what Paul Simon, who's been intensely creative since the 50s, 1950s. And his response, he was on a, a talk show, The Tonight Show, before Carson was even there. But he was being interviewed and he was asked, so, so what do you do when you get stuck? And I love his response because he says, well, you know, what does it mean to be stuck? He says, I'm stuck when every path I look down doesn't lead me to where I want to go. And his response is, when I feel stuck, I start to I start to look for new paths. And so he he's never stuck. His popularity has gone up and down. But even he he did a really unpopular Broadway show that just bombed. But for him, that was progress. And then he's even still putting out new and innovative music. He's not touring anymore, but his albums that he's putting out are just so inventive and they crash things together. And when you listen to it, listen to the stories behind where he got some of his most popular music were weird mashups of, of everything uh, like New Orleans Dixieland to uh, you know Southern Swamp Rock and all in one music uh, uh, gospel. And they all got together in a barn and they combined all these things and came out with one of his most popular songs. So that to me, fun is that uh, making stuff up that works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Following your curiosity and uh, experimenting a little bit for sure. Yeah. Being willing to suck. So uh, last. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I think that, that that's that comes with a freedom yeah. in there to go. You know what? The stakes are low. And uh, it's okay if I if I fail. It's okay if this sucks uh, because this isn't what everything's riding on. This is simply part of the process. Yeah. The um, volume of your failure will increase the volume of your success. Indeed, indeed. Um, okay, so last question. Uh, I talk a lot about habits, right? Daily creative habit, and now my my book, you know, make fun a habit. I would love to know what are a few of your habits that help you be regulated and help you stay on course um, that maybe you do daily. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, and again, I, I'll say that I do them daily, but I really don't. I mean, it's one of those things, it's aspirational. So one thing is, and this is where like 
winning the morning means winning the day, but uh, having a nine-year-old means that he wins most of the days. But the to me, waking up and having my first thoughts go towards gratitude. And part of what helps me with that is just, I've got the, uh, um, like a daily devotional that I do on my phone. So first thing I do when I get up is I open up and it's a year through the Bible. And so I get some scripture and I get some, it's done by the people who do the Bible project. So there's some great animations that go along with that. So that's the the first thing. And then um, it's just kind of get my mind, gratitude first, lead with gratitude, because it changes your perspective for the rest of the day. Now, I also like to get some movement in at the start of the day. And because now, uh, like my shoulders, I've had surgeries on my shoulders, surgeries on my knees, and so things don't bend as much. So the movement isn't as rigorous, but I still try and do at least a little bit of stretching, a little bit of movement before I sit down at my desk. I also attempt, I've got an alarm, so every 90 minutes, I try and get up and move. Um, and that's something that is throughout the day, every day. So to me... The way I start my day with gratitude and with movement kind of is a high level and everybody's going to do it a little bit differently. But to me, you know, they say uh, movement improves your cognitive ability. So keeping moving throughout the day and then gratitude just impacts your perspective throughout the day. So those two things. Awesome. Love it. Love it. Well, thank the great questions. And I'm a believer that, I learn as much from you through your questions as I do through your answers. So I I enjoy our conversations every time we get together. It's not often enough. And I realized you had a busy West Coast trip. And and so I would have bought you any the beverage of your cho choice if you had time coming through Ventura. Next time, we can think about it. Um, and if I if I make it, I know you're bouncing all over the world and mostly in the United States. But if I'm wherever in the same uh, area code, let's make sure that we try and connect. So thank you again. Absolutely. You got it, John. Thank you. Thank you.